On today, we're just going to Jeremiah, the first chapter. On today, I want to do some teaching today in the Word of God. God is good to us and just continues to bless us day by day. Praise the Lord. I realize every day as I get older, I realize the old saints and the mothers and preachers and pastors used to say, every day we get sweeter and sweeter as the day go by. As you have fellowship with the Lord and you grow with the Lord. You're growing in him. Praise the Lord. The things that used to take you down don't take you down no more. Amen. Praise the Lord. You, you have been experiencing the Lord. So the Bible says tribulation, work, and patient, and patient, hope, and hope, experience. And the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts. The more you have experience with God, you don't get rattled by things that go on around you. Because you know the same God that brought you through 30 years ago will bring you through today. The same God that protected you when you were a child is protecting you today. The same God, my God, that formed the world is looking over you. Praise the Lord. You got, you got some angels that have been dispatched. Praise the Lord. That's working in your favor. Praise the Lord. You better praise him while you got a chance. You better bless the Lord. We're going to talk about the assignment today. Be assignment. So make sure you keep your Bibles today. Be assignment. Be assignment. An assignment is the task or piece of work assigned to someone as part of a job or a course of study. And we must realize God has given us all an assignment in the kingdom of God. And many times we may not know our assignment, but when we come in the doors, we begin to work in the kingdom of God. They used to say, whatever your hands find to do, but sometimes we have to steer you in the right direction. Whatever your hands find to do, you'd be working in the kingdom of God. We as individuals, as groups, as a congregation, as districts, as jurisdiction, we uh, have an assignment. Because we all have gifts. We all have talents. We have expertise. Uh, we can all help one another. There's areas that there's many things that we can do that God blessed us to specialize. You know, if God bless you and you have a, if you certify in a career and you're a doctor, why wouldn't you? Uh, do some medicine at church. Amen. If you're a nurse, why wouldn't you nurse at church or help nurse? If you, if you got expertise in that area, right. you got to use it to the glory of God. Amen. Uh, if you got management expertise. All those things are needed in the kingdom of God. Amen. And God has given us all an assignment to do. When I look at the Bible and I just look at the power of God, how he gives, he would give mankind the, the ability to, to put together structures and to build buildings and to build uh, his temple and to just do the thing. Then you look today. You, you all don't know how to build a skyscraper. But God has given architects the mind and the way to draw it on paper and then men they can go assemble it and put it together. All the fine things that are in this world. So God has given us all the sign and all gifts. And we're going to quickly look at Jeremiah today. Look at Jeremiah because Jeremiah had an assignment from the Lord and God and we read in his book in the Bible in Jeremiah 1 it said the words of Jeremiah the son of Hilkiah of the priest that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah the son of Amon king of Judah in the thirteenth year of his reign it came also in the days of Jehoiakim the son of Josiah king of Judah and to the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah the son of Josiah King of Judah to the carrying away of the Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. So it gives you an idea of what time period this is. Just like God has called us in 2023, we have an assignment. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Anybody know that today? Before you were ever formed in your mother's womb, before you were even thought of, God already knew us. God already knew us. When you're going through in your life, you got to know that God knew you before you even thought of, before you were even a sprinkle or a spot. He knew who you were. Before I came before out the room, he tells Jeremiah, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations. Now, was he a prophet as a baby? But God said, I already ordered his steps from when he was coming out before it, before time I ordained him, I ordered him to be what he is today. Just like I am. Before I was born, God knew I was going to be a preacher. Amen. He knew I was going to be a pastor. I didn't know it. <laughs> but God knew it. 
He knew before the beginning of time. Then said I, O oh Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. And many times we run away from God because we say what well, we can't do. But you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If God calls you to do something, he will give you the best. He will give you the power, the access to do it. If God gives us a vision, God will make provision for it. We just must believe God. He tells us, he tells Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces because he has an assignment to do. Uh, for I'm with you to deliver thee, saith the Lord. You got an assignment to do. So God tells him in advance, you're going to see some things. <laughs> you're going to see some scary faces. You're going to see some people that's not with you. You're going to see some people that look like they want to attack you. But you got to go ahead and do what I called you to do. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched his mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I put my words in thy mouth. Yeah. This is something about God. He comforts you when he gives you an assignment to do. He said, Not only I called you, but he said, I don't put my words in your mouth. I don't put my words for you to do yeah. in your mouth. See, I've set thee over. This is his assignment. This is Jeremiah's so I've set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down. And to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. More of the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen, has well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I'm going to hurry up and perform it for you. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a, a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. Then the Lord said to me, Out of the north, and evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, said the Lord, and they shall come and they shall sit, everyone his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls thereof, round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, and worship the works of their hands. Thou therefore gird up thy loins. God will tell us everything, but he will give us what to do. He won't tell you the whole thing. You, when we read the Bible, if Jacob, if Joseph knew what he had to go through, he seen himself at the end, but he didn't see what he had to go through. He didn't see himself in the pit. He saw himself in the palace. He saw some things like, but he didn't see what he had to go through. He didn't see himself in prison. He said, so here it is. He said, thou therefore gird up thy laws and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee, but be not dismayed in their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city, an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the prince priests, thereof against the people of the land and they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee for I am with thee saith the Lord to deliver thee it is something that God gives him assignment tells him what he's going to do tells him what the people are going to do but God said you will prevail just like he does love God may talk to us and tell us to do things and things come against us but you got to remember what the Lord said no matter how rough it is, no matter how it looks, the Lord already told him from the beginning, they shall not prevail. They're going to fight against thee. For I am with said, but I'm going to deliver you. Jeremiah is heavily entrenched in religious and political, in the political time of Judah when you read the Bible. He started his ministry around 626 to 626. 627 to 626 B.C. And eventually when you study the scriptures it suggests that he was stoned to death about 570 B.C. That's about 57 years he was a prophet. That he was doing the Lord's work in the land. He gives the nation spiritual leadership as God was serving judgment upon the nation. This is his assignment. Because of their idolatry and because of wickedness and disobedience to God's word. When you read the Bible, Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. We don't know if anybody got saved while he was prophesying. 
Because the people were just entrenched in wickedness and doing what they were supposed to do. But he had an assignment from God. Just like we as, as even ministers today, if nobody gets saved, you still got to preach the gospel. Right. We know people are getting saved, but I mean, if, there, if nobody gets saved, if one gets saved, you got to keep on preaching. You got to keep on teaching. But he would shed tears because of the messages that he got from God. That what God was going to do to them for the evil if the people would not repent. And he preached that to them and prophesied to them. Yet they appeared not to pay him much mind. Y'all ever seen that? Y'all know y'all told your truth. Look like you ain't paying me no mind. And the people weren't paying him no mind. He preached throughout Israel. He condemned idolatry. There was greedy priests. There were false prophets. He himself would be banned from the temple when you study Jeremiah. Being a prophet and the son of a priest, they banned him because of his sermons telling them to turn from evil, to get right, to turn from idolatry, repent of your sin, stop being hypocrites in the service of the Lord in the temple. They didn't want to hear that. You know, a lot of times no, people don't want to hear what's right. They want to hear stuff that each day ears. You got people that come, and I'm scared of prophets that always prophesy about money and houses and land, and they tell nobody nothing else. But you can have all the houses and cars and land, but your soul will be required like the rich man. The Bible said, "Not food." Don't you say, "Ooh, I got so much money." The rich man said, "Well, I guess I'm gonna build my barn and put more money in it." The Bible said, "Not food." Don't you know your soul will be required tonight? You can't take no money and cars with you. You got to have your spirit right. You got to have your soul right with the Lord. He told them subsequently to surrender to Babylon because God had allowed Babylon to come up. King Nebuchadnezzar to serve as a to, to, to discipline the nation. Don't you know when we don't do right, God will allow nations and evil people to rise up, to spank you, to get you back in control. If they won't listen to God, he would have never rose up and took over. But God said, I'm going to let your enemies have you for a while. I'm going to let them take over. You're not listening to what I'm saying. You're not listening to my prophet. You're disobedient. And when we look at the, in the natural realm, we know what happens to disobedient children. In the natural realm. The Bible tells us when we read the Bible that your days may be long upon earth. That things will go well with you. A lot of things don't go well with some adults because they were disobedient children. Amen. They were like that and they didn't get it. They didn't get it right. They didn't get it straightened out. And they suffered some things because of what they did. And then some of their kids come along and they think, why they kids so bad? Did you forget how you were? <laughs> and the Bible says you reap what you sow. Yeah. And so is a man reap to us. Whatever man saw it, that shall he also reap. And then you try to act like you a pristine child and know you was bad as hell. And then you wonder why you got a bad child. <laughs> but then he, but he allowed them to him to rise up and to discipline him. So what am I saying today? Jeremiah had an assignment. And all of us have an assignment from God. All of us have something to do. All of us have a race to run. No, you may not be the pastor, but God is calling you to do something. In the kingdom of God, you may play music, you may sing, you may worship, you may work on the finance committee. You, but there's all kind of areas in the church in the kingdom of God that God is calling you to work in to fulfill your assignment. Jeremiah had an assignment, and God has given us all an assignment. Number one, your main purpose in life. All of us need to know. You know, you you got people that talk about purpose all the time. And don't get confused when people talk about purpose. But any human being, your main purpose is to worship God. Your main purpose in life is to worship your God. Before you find anything else, before you get tied up with anything else, our main purpose is to worship and glorify God. When God gave was telling Jeremiah, he called him from his mother's womb. He was, God was telling him the sign that I didn't give for you. To glorify me. Your main purpose is to glorify God. All other things we have are underneath Almighty God. We have to first seek Him, right? Matthew 6 and 33 says what? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. 
And all these things shall be added unto you. People get this thing messed up. Because first we have to seek him. And then God will add on to us. In Luke the 12th chapter, 25th through the 32nd verse it says, And which of you taking nothing can add his stature one cubit? In other words, you can't make yourself grow, can you? You can't add nothing to yourself to make you grow. If you then not being able to do uh, that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? The Bible says, consider the lilies how they grow, which is the day in the field, and tomorrow is cast in the oven. I was looking at talking about that yesterday as I was driving yesterday looking and talking about the grass, how God can allow it to get hot and the sun to stay out and not rain and burn the grass away, and then God let it rain and look at the grass come back like it never died. Yeah. So God is saying, if I can do this, in other words, uh, I consider the lilies. He said, uh, they toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not raised like one of them. If then God so clothed the grass, which is the day in the field, which I talked about, and tomorrow cast in the oven, God can burn it up and grow it back tomorrow if he wants to. How much more will he clothe you, O ye little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Don't you know God knows you need to eat? God knows you need to drink? God knows exactly what you need. But rather the Bible says, Seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure. I'm going to dance and shout when I read that. For the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You know God wants to give us the best. He wants to give his children the best. So what must we do? Psalm 57 and 2 said, I cried out to the God most high, to the God who fulfills his purpose in me. Write that down if you don't have it. Write it down. You got a pen, pencil, your phone. Psalm 57 and 2. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose in me. God will fulfill his purpose in you if you allow him to. If you present yourself to God and give yourself to him, he will help you in your assignment. God has a purpose for all of our lives. There's nobody without a purpose. Sometimes we look at insects and we look at pestilence, things that are in the world. You say, uh, what's the use of a mite? What's the use of a mouse? What's the use of a mosquito? What's the use? All these things that are in the world. But don't you know there's things that eat them? There's things that take care of them. There's things that they take care of. There's an ecosystem that works. There's nothing here by accident. God has put it all here for a purpose. God has his will fulfilled every purpose in us if we allow him to do it. He will fulfill it. You will be fulfilled in serving God if you give yourself over to God. Totally. But the Bible says we can't serve God in what? Man, we got to serve God. God is a jealous God. God is the only way in the Bible where you read jealousy. God's the only one allowed to be jealous. Did y'all know that? <laughs> so you got jealousy in your heart. You better ask God to save you and take it out. Amen. It's the only place in the Bible where God allows jealousy. He said, I'm a jealous God. I'm not going to let you serve. Nobody else to serve me. You're going to either serve me or I'm going to get rid of you. You out. God ain't going to let you serve two masters. He ain't going to let you serve the devil. You know, some people, the devil trick them. They got what? They got seven toes in the world and three in the church and think they belong to God. God, knows, don't, God doesn't play games. You can't play games with God. You know, some people play games. Society plays games. Um, uh, people in the world play games. God don't play games. He wants you to be sold out to him. Romans 8. 28 through 29. We love to say this, but we got to get in the word. And we know that all of these things work together for the good to them that what? Love God. What does God say? If you love God, you will obey Him. Right. Anybody say they love God and don't want to follow what God say? They don't love God. They don't love God. Mary, Mary, sister, say, You don't love God? What's wrong with you? They got a song like that. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? You need to love God. To them who are called according to his purpose.
purpose. There's a word purpose. Your purpose got to come from God. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So coming into ordained, the word ordained, when you hear the word ordained, it means come from the root order of order. When you hear the word ordained, and God ordained marriage, that means he ordered it. So God is a God of order. Anybody know that? God is not a God of chaos. He's not the God of mayhem, the insurance company commercial. Mayhem, tear up your house. God is not a God of mayhem and, and disorder. God is a God of order. And the Bible says, let everything be done decent and in order. If something out of order, and you know it's chaos, you know God's not in it. If it's out of order, God's not in it. He don't have no power. He's not the author of confusion. Ordained means God gave a decree. God ordered it. He aligned it before the foundation of the world. God ordained us to be people who must submit to the divine order of God. Did you know that? He ordained it. He made a decree from the beginning that we ought to be aligned up before the foundation of the world. God ordained us to be people to submit to his divine order in the world. What is God's ultimate purpose? And we find, if we don't have this assignment, the ultimate purpose of God is to redeem all of us back to himself. We don't have to wait for Easter. We know what the, his divine purpose was. For him to redeem us back to himself through his son, Jesus Christ. To create a new heaven and a new earth that we will be his people and he will be our God to dwell with us forever. God always going to dwell with us. But God has no dealing with sin. So that's why we have to commit to Jesus, right? We have to repent of our sins. God don't have no dealing with sin. Early on when I got back in the church, I said, Lord, why did Jesus say that? My God, my God, why? He said, my God, my God, why are you forsaking me? The son of the living God. And God revealed that thing to me. He said, because at that moment my son became sin. And I don't have no dealing with sin. He had to die for the sins of the world. So Jesus, who did no wrong, became sin for all of us. And died on the cross. And God had to turn it back. But the whole shot by on his own son. When he became sin for the whole world. And he died. That we might live today. We got something to praise God for. That's enough right there. You and me, I want to praise God. We want to praise God that Jesus redeemed you back. You should shout every day because of that. You know, some people every day. What's, what am I happy about? You ought to be happy that Jesus died for you. That's enough every day that you get up and praise God. Ephesians 2 and 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works which God had before ordained, there's the word ordained, that we should walk in them. God ordered and decreed it that we ought to walk in it from the foundation of the world. And the same as the thought last night, the message they had last night, Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God has an expected end for all of us. I preached a message years ago. God has an expectation for all of us. He don't want none of us to perish. He has an expectation for you. Just like a good parent has expectation, expectation for their children. You know, a good parent don't want nothing bad to happen to their children. They want to be successful. They want to prosper. They want them to have a good marriage and children. They want, they want the best for their children. Amen. But what do you think God wants for you? And he's your ultimate heavenly father. He wants good things for us. He wants an order for us. So I want you to let you know that assignments aren't always easy. Assignments aren't always easy. But God is on our side. God is on our side. And, and as I said many times, when they ordain us to be elders in the church, and they, we go through it, and we say, and then one thing we say, as God is my helper. Because everybody needs God as their helper. You can't do this by yourself. To help us to do the task and the assignment to be successful, we need God on our side. Nehemiah's cupbearer for the king uh, for the king was on assignment also. He didn't have time for foolishness. 
You know it's too late in the evening. You know, people, you talk to people, y'all run to people in the store, and you know y'all join in with them. They say, ooh, child, this gets so bad, I don't know what we're going to do. So you don't have time for foolishness. We got to use the wisdom. But he didn't come down off the wall. Right. Don't you know when we work in the church, you always go have an enemy when you got an assignment. They go always tell them, what you doing that for? What you serving for? What you going to church for? What you praying for? What you giving for? Guess what? You don't have to.
and cheeseburgers and fries and turkey necks and just keep feeding it no matter fast and see what your flesh be out of control. But you feed it everything you want and the flesh gonna get out of control. But when you start denying, you gotta deny this flesh sometimes. Cast me not, the old shop. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I'm like David. I'll be telling God, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Anybody can preach, but I want the Holy Ghost. I want the anointing that destroys yokes. I want people to know. I want the, I want the devil terrified when I preach. Glory to God. I want the Holy Ghost running through these pews and these aisles. That's what you want. You want to sing of the anointing of God. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. So y'all write that right down, Psalm 51. Then will I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guilt to them. Don't y'all know blood on our hands when we don't ask God to forgive us? Blood is on your hand. Glory to God. You have talked about your brother and sister so bad. And people think when you physically murder somebody in the spirit realm, the Bible said, no, uh -huh. in the spirit realm, if you talked about people bad, Talked about them so bad, you done murdered their kid. Yes, yes. And blood is on your head. And you need to ask God to forgive you. Oh God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy life. Oh Lord, open thy lips, and thy mouth shall forth, show forth thy praise. For thou desire not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart, O God, that I might not sin against thee. Did you know God is near a contrite spirit? Well, you know how to ask God to forgive you. That's the part about David. David did a lot of wrong in the Bible. But he knew how to ask God to forgive. He wasn't like Saul. Saul didn't ask God to forgive him. He just went on doing his dirt. You know, that's how the devil get up. We just step over our mess and keep going and think we sanctified. We can't step over our mess. Because you can't dance like you used to. You can't shout like you used to. Your hands are waiting down. There ain't nothing on you. And God is not receiving your praise. So you want to you have it clear with the Lord. Number two, pray to become spiritual. And we're going to fulfill our assignment. Pray to become spiritual. You can't do this in the flesh. Flesh can't inherit the things of God. To develop a, a routine of prayer. Prayer life. Did y'all notice that when we talk about spiritual gifts, that there is no spiritual gift of prayer? Because everybody's supposed to pray. Because if you go to spiritual gift of prayer, you say, well, Pastor Simmons, he got the special gift of prayer. I ain't going to pray. The Bible said, mankind ought to always pray and not faith. Pray without ceasing. Daniel prayed three times a day in adversity. Let me run through this. We should pray at least three times a day. How you gonna do that? I'm at work. You can pray in your mind. How am I do that? I'm a trip. I'm on a trip in the car. You can pray in your mind. Amen. Pray without ceasing. Never let the flame go out. You know, if you're praying all the time, you got a connection with God. That's right. And it's hard to hate people you're praying for. Amen. How you gonna hate somebody you're praying for? Lord bless them. Lord touch them. God will fix you. You ain't going to hate them no more. Because you're praying for them. That's, right. That's why he told you to pray. Because he'll fix your heart. Yeah. That when people do stuff against you, you say, Lord touch them. They show hurt my feelings. Help them, Lord. Amen. And the Lord help you not to hate them. Mm -hmm. He'll put love in your heart. Number three, fast at least twice a week. We should all fast at least twice a week. And I know people always say, well, I'm on medicine. It's amazing that when the doctor said, we can't do that test on you unless you don't, unless you fast tonight. You somehow you figure out how to fast then. Yeah, amen. They ain't gonna look at my they ain't gonna look at my heart unless I fast uh, all night until the morning. Yeah. But when it comes to church child, I'm on medicine. I'm sick. <laughs> you need God to do something for you, don't you? Amen. Fasting brings spiritual clarity. If you got something in your life you need clarity, you better fast. You got a big decision you need to make? Fast. God's voice is heard clearly when you fast. You can't hear God when you're full of chicken and mashed potato. You can't hear him. Fasting is a great way to gain clarity for an important decision. Fasting cleanses the soul, raises the mind, makes the flesh subject to the spirit, humbles the heart, and makes us more repentful. When you fast, you're easy to repent. 
But when you don't fast, the flesh says, I ain't, I ain't do nothing wrong. I know who I am. But when you fast, even if you didn't do nothing wrong, you'll say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt. I didn't mean to harm you. I didn't mean to. I want to go with Jesus. It don't hurt me to say, I'm sorry. They said, man, a, a real man know how to say he's sorry. Well, a real saint know how to say he's sorry too. Glory to God. Discipline is the flesh. Teaches us self-control. When you can't, you got to can't help it. You talk all the time, do everything. You need to fast. It gives you a new desire and it gives you a deeper praise. Number four, seek to be more like Jesus. I'm trying to help you fulfill your assignment today. Let this mind, Philippians 2, 5 through 11, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made to the likeness of men. Don't y'all know we all servants in the kingdom of God? We all serve. We got to learn how to serve. Jesus said, the greatest among you will be your servant. I'm the greatest servant in this church because I got the highest position. I'm supposed to be the servant. I'm the greatest servant. I'm supposed to serve the most because I got the highest. Anybody the greatest is supposed to serve the most. I'm serving all the people. I'm praying for you. I'm doing what God called you to do. If you want to want God to work in, you got to serve. Amen. Serve in the kingdom of God. But made himself with no reputation, took him within the form of a servant, made the likeness of and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself. It's amazing how Jesus humbled himself. And I see people get on the internet and say they saved and they boasted and they got a bad attitude. And the Lord humbled himself, Jesus the Christ, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also, also is highly exalted him. And giving them the name of every day. When you when you humble yourself, God will lift you up. He God said, I'm a, if you if you raise yourself up, God said, I'm gonna bring you down. If you humble yourself, God said, I'm gonna raise you up. I'm gonna raise you up because you know how to humble yourself. One day singing today, keep me low down at the feet of Jesus. I'll be satisfied at the feet of Lord. When you get down to the feet of Jesus, you just fit for God and say, Come on up. Because you got the right spirit. Some people don't have the right spirit. That's why they can't go all the way with the Lord. That's why God can't bless them real good. They got a haughty spirit. But we got it. Well, but God highly exalted because he humbled himself and gave him a name of every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Number five, seek to please God. Everything you do, all you do, you do it unto God. Even if you do it unto the little ones, you do it unto God. Everything you do, the New Testament tells you, and everything you do, you do it as unto God. God is looking how you serve. You know, you got the comedian shows where they had the big spoon, they like, all I got is beans and potatoes, apple. Some people just serve real bad. You don't serve like that, you serve it unto God. People are watching you. We want the church to grow. We want people to be pleased. We want people to feel the presence of the Lord yes. when they come in. We want to do And everything you do, do it unto God. Enoch had this testimony, didn't he? That he pleased God. Amen. You know, people get out there in the world and they say, you'll tell them, you know, you need to be saved. And they say, well, God loves everybody. He do. He, do. he does love everybody. But he's not pleased with everybody. He loved everybody, but he's not pleased with your character if you're not lined up with the word of God. Right. He do love everybody. Yeah. Red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight. All kind of people doing all kind of things in the world. God loves everybody. Yeah. But is he pleased with your lifestyle? That's what you better ask. Are you pleasing with his lifestyle? Amen. Number six, develop a love for the word of God, the Holy Bible. Y'all hear me say, read the Bible every day, read the scripture. Apply to your life, daily readings. You got daily reading your Sunday school lesson, daily devotions on the internet, and in apps, scriptural application. And then God will drop scriptures in your spirit. Amen. And sometimes God may have you read the same thing for months and months all the time. And you don't know why. But you got to read the Word of God. Yeah. Number seven, desire fellowship in the fellowship of the saints. I'm talking about fulfilling your assignment. One thing I have desired, Lord, that will I seek after. 
I want to be in his presence. How do we do fellowship? Bible study, Sunday school, worship services. We're looking and expecting God's divine impartation from the Lord. There's some things you cannot get at home that you have to be in the service of the Lord. You have to press your way. My grandmother said, I ain't no rust out, I'm a wear out. In other words, I'm going to press my way. When I got back in the church, and I would sometimes tell her, we come in the morning, Tuesday morning prayer, and I would get off work back in many years ago, I used to work third, and I would be coming to prayer, and I said, Grandma, you going? She said, you going, I'm going. <laughs> I said, I'll stop by and pick you up. She said, if you going, I'm going. She said, I'm going to hurt at home. I'm not even going to come to church. <laughs> See, we got to get that mentality to get a blessing from the Lord. And some people say, child, I'm going to just stay here and suffer. But she came and got her blessing. Because I feel much better in the service of the Lord. I'm going to press my way to the house of the Lord. I might get my miracle today. And number eight, pray for wisdom. Understand now, everybody ought to be praying every day. God, give me more wisdom. You don't know what to do on your own. You ain't the smartest person in the world. And if you know everything, you lie. You know, when you meet, you meet people say, child, I know everything. You say, child, they lie. <laughs> no, nobody know everything. Only God knows everything. So that means we need to continue to pray that God will give us enlightenment. Understand that not to discern the tricks of the devil. Sometimes the tricks of the devil right before your face and you can't discern it. You can't discern his schemes, his tactics, what he's doing. We don't want to be fatally distracted by our own lusts, do we? Because whatever God saved you out of, he's always trying to draw you back. Yeah. Whatever he brought you out of, because the Bible said, once the house is garnished and swept, once God saves you, cleanses you, if you don't get the Holy Ghost in, the Bible said that whatever you came out of is coming out of seven times worse and coming back trying to fill you back up. Yeah. It's coming after you. If you was an alcoholic, it's coming after you seven times more. So you got to get rid of it. You got to fill it, fill that temple with the Holy Ghost. Cause see, you can't be you can't be demon possessed with the Holy Ghost in. See, God ain't gonna share it. <laughs> Glory to God. You ain't gotta worry about child. I'm a, I can't. I got the Holy Ghost. I ain't worried about being demon because I'm gonna cast the devil out. But I got the Holy Ghost on the inside. But if you ain't got nothing on the inside, you better you better not go. You better not come in and cast the devil out. But you are gonna be like the seven sons of Seed. They gonna say, Jesus, I know Paul. I know who are you? They gonna. Get you and run you off that time. So what's wrong with them? They didn't have what they said they had, child. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. You better have the Holy Ghost, you're going to deal with these things. Because they're going to get you. You know, And you know what they said? We tried to, we're going to cash you out in the name of, of Paul's God. See, that's what they messed up at. Yep. You got to know God for yourself. I can't cast the devil. I'm gonna cast the devil out in my mom's God. My mom's God. You already know God for yourself, Amen. and you can cast him out. There's a three plan. There's a threefold plan of Satan, right? To steal, kill, and destroy. He's like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. The sower of discord among your brother, the father of all lies, and the author of confusion. That's your enemy that's working against you. And number nine. The last one of the day. No, I got nine and ten. Number nine, walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Take a little time to teach today. Walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. For Ephesians 5 said, Be ye therefore fathers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ has also loved us, and has given himself for an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. Sin stinks in the nostril now. Y'all know it's in the Bible. It always says sweet smelling Savior. Righteousness, God wants to receive that. The, when we have the righteousness of God in us, when we're saved, Jesus Christ, we give off the right aroma. Sin stinks in his nostril. But fornication and uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. There's something we just don't, we don't do like when uh, Evangelist Russell was here. Something we just don't do because we sanctify. Right. We say. Right. Neither filthiness nor foolishness talking, 
nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. You know, you can only take so much foolish talk if you really got the only one saying. And then you said, child, let's start thanking God. Let's start giving praise to God. Right. And you can get rid of a lot of foolish people on the phone like that, too. Amen. You can get rid of a lot Amen. of foolishness in your life. Amen. When people start talking crazy, the child, let's pray. Well, my child, my beans are going to burn up. <laughs> my steak is on fire. My, my God, I think my daughter called me. They don't want to pray. I've never seen people think they don't want to pray when you talk. I tell you, it's easy to, when they, they're on the wrong course. But this, you know, that no homeowner, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. No, let no man deceive you with vain words because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. We see that. That's what we're preaching about in Jeremiah. The wrath of God came upon them because of disobedience. And they wouldn't turn. The wrath came upon the world with the pandemic and they don't realize it. They don't know what happened. That was a light wrath from God to show us to get on course. To get back in track. Get back on track. Be, be, be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness. You know, like I said, we weren't always saved. But now ye are in the light of the Lord. Walk as children of the Lord. For the Spirit, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Now Colossians 2, 6 through 10. As ye therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, walk, so walk ye with him. My prayer, and I learned how to pray from the Lord. My prayer, I pray a lot to be rooted and grounded in the Lord. You got to pray to be rooted and grounded. Anybody that deal with flowers and deal with anything, you, you see your tree is rooted, don't you? That's why the Bible said be like a tree planted by the riverside. You won't be moved. I drive all, all over the country. I've been, I see, I've been on the ocean. I mean, you see trees and all, they, they, they stand in there. They rooted and grounded. That's how God wants you to be. Rooted and grounded. I got a big tree in my front yard. The roots, oh, I see them all coming up in the lawn. That tree been there so long. The tree been there so long, his roots are coming up in the lawn. Not big roots are coming up. Killing some of my grass, but it's rooted, grounded in me. It ain't going to be moved. It's standing. So the Bible said, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as he had been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Don't you know we ought to be thankful every day? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. But him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead body. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of principality and power. In other words, the Bible says, seek the old path. Seek the old path. What does that mean? The way they got it. Pray. Worship in the Lord. Methods may change, but the foundation never change. We got to be rooted and grounded in the Lord. We got to invoke his presence. What is the old pattern? Prayer. I, I see, in order for God to move, I still see praying going on. No. That's the old pattern. Seek the old pattern and walk therein. You got to pray. And then let God have his way. Don't pray so much that you can't hear from God, no. Pray and then listen and see what God said. Yeah. When you pray, pray and see what God said. Pray a little while and see if God speak to you. And you know what he may say? He may say, get up. He may say, turn in the Bible and read this. He may say, pray for somebody else. He may tell you, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to help you. I'm going to deliver you. Last one. I said, seek your own path, path to righteousness, truth, and the Christian way. Number 10, praise God every day. If you're going to fulfill your assignment, you got to praise God every day. You can't wait to get to the house of the Lord and praise God. Because you ought to know that in the pandemic. If you couldn't get this, you got to praise God. Even if you can't come, it's two times to praise God. When you feel like it and when you don't. Yeah. Psalm 9, the ninth number is a song, 1 through 10. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my what? 
Did I tell you God is a jealous God? Amen. Not half my heart, Lord, I'm going to give you half because I'm busy. With your whole heart, you give everything to God. Everything is. You know what? You give yourself over to somebody that's going to harm you. God wants the best for you. That's how it should be for, for married couples. You fall in love, and if you're really in love with one another, you don't want to harm one another. That's right. You want the best for each other. You give it 100%. I don't want to see nothing happen. So I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth that all thy marvelous works. Don't you know when you live in right and you go out and we see you and the people see you, they see the glory of God upon you. You want people to see the glory of God Amen. upon you. They want to see God. You want to show how God is blessing you. What God is doing in you. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praises to thy name, O thou most high. You know what? You want to sing praises. You'll be going down the stairs singing praises. Coming upstairs singing praises. Singing praises in the shower. A lot of y'all retired, but if you was at work, you'd probably be singing praises. Bless the Lord. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sayest in the throne, judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial has perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. Amen. He hath prepared his throne for judgment, and he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed. Anybody oppressed, he will be a refuge for you. A refuge in a time of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. When you seek the Lord, he will not forsake you. When you, and when you cry out to the Lord, that's what I want us to know. When you cry to the Lord, the Bible says, and he heard me. It didn't, it didn't say he was trying to hear you. And I cried to the Lord, and he heard my prayer. And he heard my cry. He heard me. Psalm 103, 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me do what? Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I preached a series about forget not the Lord's benefits. We all went to work, and we're going to work because of benefits. They take my benefits away, I'm finding a new job. So that means I can't go to the doctor. I got to pay for it. I'm going to pay everything. But you work because you get some benefits. God gives you benefits. 22nd verse, bless the Lord all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my son. So we want to praise the Lord at all times. For God and have the praise of his people. Hebrews 13 and 15. There is salvation, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's breakthroughs, there's miracles in the praise. When you praise God. So you praise ought to be common for us. Because we need a breakthrough from the Lord. We need healing from the Lord. We need deliverance from the Lord. Praise Him at all times. Let His praise continue to be in your mouth. Praise the Lord. Y'all read the Bible when it's read Jesus and no God was found in His mouth, right? He had good things in His mouth. Not bad things in His mouth. Praise will carry you through. Did y'all know that? Yes. You can be going through a storm, but praise will carry you through. Praise confuses the enemy. The devil don't know what's wrong with you. He just slapped you, tried to slap you with something. You still praising God. You don't understand. He confused why you dancing and shouting. I don't know about you. I didn't come to church sometime, and I just had to give God praise. I might have been going through, but you know what? God gave me a miracle when I started praising him. You got to praise your victory. You can't let the enemy win. Praise will enhance your victory. So we got to finish our test. This is all about your assignment day. You got to finish your test. Pass your test. <coughs> finish your course. And understand that the Lord is on your side. <clears throat> and 
Then I'm going to finish off with what Paul said, and we're going to be done for today. And we read it in Philippians 3rd chapter, and it's somewhere around the 10th and 21st verse. And he said, not as though I had already attained. We have not all made it there yet. I tell people, when you get perfect, you need to die right then. Because you better get out of here. Because we're all working on perfection. We're working on it. Working on this thing. That I may, when it starts, it says, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, be made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained. All of us are working on this thing. Even were I already perfect, Paul says. But I follow after that I may apprehend. For that which I also apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brother, brethren, sistering, whatever you want to say. I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. And that's what we all got to do. He said, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. You can't go back to the past. Some people try to live in the past. I want to know what Jesus is doing. It's good to read the past. It's good to know history. But we need to know what's going on now. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to the things which are before. A lot of us have heard the past. Things have happened. But I'm pressing. Yes. He said, I press yes. toward the mark. Anybody pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus? Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything be otherwise minded, God shall even reveal unto you. Nevertheless, when too we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be fathers together of me. Why is Paul saying that? You follow your leader as he follows Christ. You have to follow the pastor as he follows Christ. As long as I'm pointing you to Jesus, that's my job. I'm taking you to heaven. I'm pointing you to Jesus. I didn't say your salvation in me. I didn't say sing praises unto the past sinner. I said sing praises unto the Lord. I said glorify his name. So Paul says, brother, be followers together of me and mark them which, which walk so as ye have us as an example. We're examples to Paul wrote that he said, be thou an example to Timothy of those that believe. You have to be an example. Let nobody despise your youth. You're not too young to be saved. You're not too old to be saved. You're not too old, too young, in between to be an example. All of us can be an example to them that believe. For many walk of whom I've told you often, and now I tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earth of things. For our conversation is in heaven, from which we look for the Savior of the world, Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change our vile body. <laughs> that it may be fashioned like unto his glory of body. According to the working whereby he is able to even so do all things unto himself. Jesus died as a living soul and rose as a living spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let us fulfill our assignment today. Finish your assignment. In my famous words I like to say, don't give in. Don't give out. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Don't stop. Don't throw in the top. And never, never, never give up. Amen. Don't give up when you got all powerful God. Let us serve God with gladness. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. We're going to get prepared to raise our offering. We hope you know God is teaching. Go over it. Put it in your mind, in your spirit, that you could fulfill your assignment with the Lord and fulfill it with gladness. Because God's got a reward for, us, for all of us. We love all of you. Praise the Lord.